Good morning. Man, y'all enjoying the weather? Warming up a little bit, praise God. I heard that they're predicting snow for Thursday and Friday during our men's thing, so. You know, I used to just bind the weather and pray over everything all of the time. And then they had a youth meeting in Dallas when I was a youth. And there was 100,000 young people camping. And we had, I mean, torrential rains. And we were all praying against it. And it rained and the news made a big deal out of it. And they interviewed this one guy. And they said, I thought you Christians believed in prayer. Hadn't you been praying that it wouldn't rain? And he said... Yeah, we have. And he says, but it didn't work. He says, does that make you wonder if God answers prayer? And he says, no, the way I look at it is there was 100,000 of us praying that it wouldn't rain. There's probably a million farmers <laughs> praying that it would rain. <laughs> he says they won. And did you know when he said that, it, it got me to thinking that if I rebuked the rain so that I could have a picnic, you know, that's just not right. And so I'm a little hesitant to go to rebuke. And I have rebuked hurricanes and seen them turn and go the other way. And I'll do it, you know, if it's necessary. But I just am not quick to go rebu rebuking the devil. Uh, we need the moisture. When Wendell first moved here, he prayed against uh, snow the entire year. He didn't <laughs> like snow. And we had a drought and we had wildfires as a result. <laughs> and so... Uh, Anyway, just be careful about using your authority for just selfish purposes. You know. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I'm going to talk about the tithe today. According to my list of things that I've taught, I use these verses out of Malachi, but I was talking about where to give in Malachi chapter three. And so that was my focus. I didn't really teach on the tithe. And so I'm going to do that today. Is that correct? I think that's correct. I, if I ask people what I taught, it doesn't always work because they'll listen to a teaching, a tape, a CD someplace, and they'll think they heard it here in school when you heard it someplace else. So. Anyway, I think that I'm correct. On I haven't taught exactly here on the tithe. So Malachi chapter 3. I want to talk about the tithe because I've been talking about giving, and I've already established that the motive behind your giving is more important than your giving. And there's a lot of scriptures I used on that, but uh, over in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse three, it says, if I give all of my goods to feed the poor, or if I give my body to be burned and don't do it motivated by love, it profits me nothing. So your attitude behind your giving is more important than your giving. And I'm not trying to diminish that we need to give and sow seed, but you need to do it with the right attitude. God looks at the heart and if your heart is wrong, it just voids all of the return. If all there was to prosperity is just give and instantly you get a hundred thousand, a hundred fold return, well then everybody in here would be a millionaire. But you can totally void uh, the return on your seed if you're giving with the wrong attitude as that verse in 1 Corinthians 13, three says. And the teaching on the tithe, I believe has caused many people to lose the return on their giving because they aren't giving with the right motivation. They're giving um, out of debt and obligation. Matter of fact, hold your finger there. I'm going to major on the tithe, but look over here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And I've probably already used these verses this year. I use them all the time. But 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and in verse 8, it says... And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. You know, that's an awesome verse, but I was really looking for verse uh, seven. <laughs> verse seven, the verse in front of that. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. So this tells you that you are supposed to give not with the wrong attitude. You need to give not grudgingly or of necessity. What is necessity? That means that you have to do it. It's not something that you want to do, but you have to do. 
So keep in mind that this is what the New Testament says, that you're supposed to give as you purpose in your heart, not as you're forced, coerced, begged, condemned into it or something like that. The attitude behind your giving is more important than your giving. With that in mind, let's look at the tithe over here in Malachi chapter 3. And in verse 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But we say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. There's a lot of things in there. We've already talked in verse 10 about where the storehouse is. That's where you're fed. It is. You should be fed in a church in a way that you can't be fed by a traveling ministry or a media ministry. And so I'm not against the tithe going to the church if it's a good church. But just because they call it a church doesn't mean that they're a good church. You give where you're fed, basically. And a good church should feed you more than a media ministry or something like that. But there's a lot of churches that they just meet one hour a week. That's it. They don't, they aren't there. They aren't doing anything. There's a lot of woke churches. There's a lot of churches that are promoting things. And if you're in a church like that, you do not put your tithe in there. You give your tithe where the storehouse is. The storehouse is where you keep your food and you go to get fed. So you give where you're fed. So I've already talked about that, but let me back up here to verse eight. When it says, will a man rob God? This is typically used to teach that the tithe is a debt. It's an obligation that you're cursed if you don't tithe. And this is the motivation for many people. I've known a lot of people that honestly, they make out their tithe check just like they do a bill. They keep it with their bills and they pay it. And, and I mean, they just down to the penny, they pay a certain amount. And they believe that you don't get anything back on your tithe. That is demanded by God. And you're just basically paying off God, keeping him off of your case. And it's only your offerings above a tithe that you get anything back on. Now, you may not have thought that, but there are a lot of people that that's the way that they teach this. This is the way I was taught it, that the tithe is mandatory and you're cursed with the curse if you don't do it. I've actually had people in our church, in my Baptist church that I grew up in, say that, you know, I wasn't paying my tithes and God made my car break down, that God uh, made my washing machine break down, that God made my tires go flat. And, it, and anyway, what they're basically saying is you either pay your tithes or God's going to take it from you in doctor bills and things breaking down. God's going to get his 10%. What that does is make, uh, you know, God, God the Father or excuse me, the Godfather, instead of God the Father. <laughs> it makes him a mob boss. You know, like the mob goes around and says, boy, there's been a lot of arson in this area. There's been a lot of broken glass and stuff. And you know, it's, it's dangerous, but if you'll pay me 10%, I'll protect you. And of course, what they don't tell you is they're the ones that'll break your windows and burn your thing if you don't pay. In other words, it's hush money. And in a sense, this is what the church has taught about the tithe. And did you know that that's exactly what this is saying right here? But this is Old Testament law. And this is a curse. This curse right here is a part of the Old Testament law. And the Bible says in Galatians 3.13 that Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. If you are tithing to avoid a curse... Well, then you're giving with the wrong motivation and it profits you nothing. It voids the return on your giving. You can't give with this Old Testament mentality because in the New Testament, I just read those verses, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, that you're supposed to give as you purpose in your heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that in the Old Testament, if they gave 10%, what we have is so much better that certainly 10%, I believe, ought to be a minimum. You know, Jamie and I, we have, I think it's 25 or 30% that we take immediately, and that just goes in what we call a give account, and that's all dedicated to that. But we give much more than that. This last year, we had somebody give us a whole bunch of money and we didn't really need it. So we gave away, we gave away 250% of our income last year. 
And the previous year, we gave away 150%. And so we give much more than that. And so I'm not saying you should just be legalistic about it, but if the 10% was under the old covenant, praise God, it seems like we should be able to give away at least more than that under the new covenant. And let me just point out here, people conveniently miss this, who sit there and say, but you gotta pay the tither, you're cursed with the curse. If in verse eight, it says, uh, you're, uh, in verse eight, will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? They conveniently leave out the offerings part. Did you know this verse is saying that if you don't pay tithes and offerings, you're cursed with the curse. So if you're going to believe that you're under a curse, if you don't tithe, you're going to have to up it to where you also have to give offerings. And one of my friends, he figured this out. I've never personally done it. But if you take all of the offerings that are commanded in the Old Testament, he says it, it approaches about 33% of your income. So if you're going to use these verses, unless you're giving 33%, you're cursed with the curse. You better crawl out from under this Old Testament law <laughs> because man, not many people are giving 33%. This is saying you're cursed with the curse if you don't tithe. And that is the way the old covenant law was. Did you know that the tithe is not just old covenant? The tithe was in effect before the law. The law came in Exodus chapter 20 is where the law was given. And in Genesis chapter 14, Abraham, after he conquered these uh, four kings, he came back and he took all of the spoil and he gave a tithe off of everything to Melchizedek. So Abraham paid tithes before there was any law, before there was any instruction about it. He just voluntarily gave one-tenth of all of the spoil to Melchizedek. And this is referenced in Hebrews chapter seven when it's talking about Jesus being our New Testament priest. And it says he's a, a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And it even mentions that Melchizedek was greater than Abraham. And Abraham paid tithes to him. So Hebrews chapter seven talks about this. And it says that there they received tithes, talking about on the earth uh, of man, but, or excuse me, here they received tithes, but there, talking about in heaven, Jesus receives tithes. So I believe that tithing is still appropriate, but the attitude, if you're doing it out of debt and obligation, you are avoiding the return on it because God loves a cheerful giver. You know, I don't know if I use this example, but there was a man, Larry Yonker, who uh, was the very first uh, general manager that our ministry ever had. This was back when we had about 20 employees. And Larry Yonker and Kim, uh, she taught school and I forgot exactly what his job was. But anyway, they were making like $3,300 a month. This is back in 1980. And that may not sound like a lot of money, but I was making about $400 a month in 1980. He was the richest person I'd known at $3,300 a month. And anyway, he wrote out his tithe check just like a bill down to the $330 and so many cents. He paid it down to the deal and he looked at it as this is just an obligation. I've got to do this and I can't expect anything off of it. He heard me teaching on this in 1980. And he decided that they were going to start giving just as they purposed in their heart. And they were going to quit giving out of just debt and obligation. And uh, so he, he quit paying a tithe check and he just started giving. And after six months, they had more money in the bank than they had ever had. And his first thought was, I must not have been giving as much as I did when I paid my tithes. But he used a check for everything he did. So he went back and started adding it up. And they had jumped up to, I think it was 23 or 24% is what they were giving. And yet they had more than they had ever had because God was blessing it back because of the attitude of their heart. And so your giving is important, but the attitude behind it is more important. And if you're giving out of the curse or to avoid the curse right here, you're missing it. We are redeemed from this curse. You are not cursed if you don't tithe. Now you're stupid if you don't tithe, but you aren't cursed, stupid. Amen. You're, in other words, you're going to take everything that God gives you and you're going to eat all of it and not plan any of it. And if you do that, you're going to go hungry. You know, Jamie and I, right now, we're reaping huge amounts, but we have sown. We have sown huge amounts. I've never had a dollar come across my path in my entire life. I'm talking about when I was a little tiny kid, I got a dollar 
a week allowance and I gave a dollar in the offering every single week. I mean, I gave 100% back then. I've never had a dollar in my life come across my path that I don't give off of it. And we have sown, sown, we have given away, a, we estimate it's over 300 million books, CDs, tapes, things. And that's not including our website that has over a million free downloads per month. We don't even count those. This is talking about physical tapes, CDs, DVDs, books, booklets, things that we've given away, over 300 million. And we give a lot of money. I give maybe 200, 300,000 a month in, in gifts, cash to people, uh, to ministries and things like that. And on and on it goes. I have sown and sown and sown. And as a result, man, I've just got the blessing of God coming upon me and overtaking me. And so, man, I believe in giving and it works but I, I don't do it in order to get something from God. I don't do it out of debt or obligation. And there's some people that would criticize me, but you know what? Don't ever criticize a person's harvest until you see how much seed they've planted. If you take everything you've got and you eat it all, you consume it on yourself, you're gonna go hungry in the future. And I tell you, Jamie and I have been as, in as severe poverty as any person in here, I believe. We've gone, I remember when Jamie was eight months pregnant, we went two weeks with nothing but water. Didn't have a bite of anything, which was dumb and it was stupid. It was my fault. But nonetheless, we have been in poverty. We've been through a lot of things, but we never, ever, ever quit giving. When we had $100 a month rent, and we were praying for money. If somebody gave us $100, I'd have given $20 off of it and have believed for the other 20. I would never just take something and just go pay a bill and never give off of it. I'd give off of everything I've ever done. And you can sit there and criticize that. I believe that you could be legalistic with that and make it so that you criticize somebody if they you know, were praying for $100 and, and just used it for what they were praying for. I wouldn't do that. I'm not legalistic with it, but I'm saying that's how committed to giving that I've been. And because of that, right now we are reaping a harvest that is just phenomenal. It is amazing. And it's because we've given and sown seed. And I'd encourage you to do the same thing. This is the purpose of your giving. You got to do it with the right attitude. It's actually a response to what God has done for us. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9 is the most information on giving in one spot in the Bible. All of chapter 8 and chapter 9 are all devoted to giving, every single verse. And the last verse of chapter 9, I believe it's verse 15, says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And basically what that's doing is just summarizing all of the stuff that was said about finances is that, you know what it's really about? It's just a way of saying, Father, thank you. It's one thing to say thank you with your words, but there needs to be action with it. Faith without works is dead. And so giving is just a way of saying, Father, you're my source. You're the one who's made everything. I trust you. I look to you. I don't look to my job. I don't look to my own natural talents and abilities. You are my source. And I'm not just saying it. I'm proving it. And here it is. I need this money, but I need you and I need your approval more. And I'm doing this out of thanksgiving to you and expressing my trust that you are my source. And I guarantee you, if God is looking, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong in behalf of those who are perfect in his sight. God is looking for people that will have a right attitude towards giving, not giving grudgingly or of necessity. People that will give because God, I love you and I, you've been so good to me and I just wanna, I wanna be a blessing back to you. And God, this is just to prove it. I'm not just saying it, but I'm proving it. You are my source. I really trust you. It's not just something I'm saying. And when God sees that, man, he'll move over everybody in Karis Bible College to find somebody with the right attitude. And it's not about how much you give. It's about the heart that you give with. It's really about percentages. A person that gives a dollar out of $2 is given 50% of everything they've got. A person that gives $1,000 and yet they got a million dollars in the bank, you are not a good giver. It's, it's according to what you have, not according to what you don't have. 
God is looking at your heart. And that's what giving is all about. He doesn't need your money, but he needs your heart. And there is some kind of a string that goes directly from your wallet to your heart. And when you touch a wallet, boy, you've touched a person's heart. And when you give, it affects your attitude towards the Lord. It is an expression of your faith and your trust in the Lord. You know, I don't know if I've used this example here. I used it recently and I can't remember if it was in here. So anyway, it wouldn't hurt you to hear it again. But you know, a child, when they're young, you tell them to say, I love you and thank you just because you have to train them how to do it. And so they don't have any desire to do it, but they're just doing it out of obedience. But then as they get older, they start watching you and they start seeing that you say thank you and that you say I love you. And so they do it because they're patterning it after you. They're, they're being discipled. But what you ultimately want is to where they just get it in their heart and they give as they purpose in their heart that they didn't say, you, they aren't saying thank you because you said now say thank you, but it just is in their heart. That's what you're ultimately wanting. And you know, it's the same thing in our giving. When you start, you may just start giving because you were commanded to give and you may do it out of nothing obedience. Then you may see some other people that are giving and you're sitting there being discipled and so you're kind of following the pattern. But ultimately, God just wants you to get to a place to where you give as you purpose in your heart. And many times people miss this by they, they will pray and they'll say, oh God, tell me what to give. And they want to be obedient. Well, again, there is a place to give because God told you something. He may have some specific thing that he's wanting you to do or somebody uh, has a need and he's wanting you to give something specifically. So I'm not saying that you ever disobey, but you don't have to be told to give. God just wants you to give because you want to give. And if you're sitting there saying, God, do you want me to give? What do you want me to give? And you're waiting on God to tell you. That's like saying, well, I'll say thank you if you tell me to say thank you. I'll say I love you if you tell me to say I love you, but I'm not going to do it of my own free will. No, you need to get to where you give as you purpose in your heart. Just give because you love God so much and you just give out of a right heart. And if you're giving out of debt, if you're giving a tithe to keep God, you know, the, the God Father off your case, well, then that's not the right attitude and it profits you nothing. So praise God. I hope you receive this and I hope you just begin to start giving because of all of the great things that God's done for us. So they're going to pass out envelopes. This is for your giving. This will go into our carries. Uh, we use it for a lot of different things. We use it primarily for our missions trips and things like that. But uh, as you sow today, you're sowing into carries. And so uh, you can take an envelope, fill out an envelope in English, not in tongues. And we'll give you a receipt for it. Praise God. You know, I want to compliment y'all. We teach a lot on finances here. We model it and do things. And did you know when people come here and minister, you guys just blow people away all of the time. I'm getting responses from our guest speakers about they've never been blessed like this in any other Bible school. You guys are good givers. And I just want to thank you for doing that. That is really a great testimony as to your heart and relationship with the Lord. So on behalf of all of those people you've given to, I just want to thank you for doing that. That's awesome. Praise God. And I tell you, you cannot outgive God. You know, you need to use wisdom. We got somebody right now that has written us and they've given us like $140,000 over the last 10 years. And right now they're in financial uh, a bind and they're asking for their money back. And did you know we do that sometimes? And I've actually told my staff to contact them and see, did they use wisdom? Did they do this? Wrong? And we're going to contact them. And I told them, I said, the worst thing he could do is pluck up his seed. I said, he's sown this money and he's got a harvest coming, but if he plucks up the seed, he'll never see the harvest. And so I said, I'm hesitant to do it. But I said, if this guy was just weird and gave away everything that he had and didn't use wisdom, I'll give him his money back. We do this on a regular basis. We've given away or we've given back lots of money that uh, we've had families before that we've received an inheritance and the family sues us and stuff like this. And so anyway, it's not about the money, but you need to use wisdom. I have known some people that didn't use any wisdom 
in their giving and just, you know, gave everything away. And that's typically not what the Lord would ask you to do. Now, I know a few people, Ashley and Carly Terradez, the night before Hannah was healed, they just were so touched. And they didn't, they, they will tell you this on their own. They say they didn't buy their daughter's healing. They knew that that wasn't so, but they just felt like that they wanted to sow a seed and they prayed about it and they wound up giving away every penny they had. They gave away all of the money in their pocket. They gave away their bank account and they gave away all of their savings. They gave away everything. That wouldn't be typical, but you know, they did it. And man, God uh, healed their daughter, which there's no way you could buy that healing. And now they are just prosperous uh, receiving millions of dollars on television all around the world and stuff. And you can't outgive God if your heart is right. But if you're doing it to somehow or another win the acclaim of people, if you're doing it for show so that you can brag about what you've done, if you're doing it out of debt or obligation, feeling like you're uh, condemned if you don't do it, all of those are the wrong reasons for giving. But if you give with the right attitude, I guarantee you, you cannot outgive God. I am living proof of it. God is blessing this boy. I am blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, Father, we love you and we just thank you for everything you've done for us. And, Father, there's no way that we could ever repay you. But we want to give today just as a token. This is money that we've worked for. It represents our effort. It represents a lot of our work and toil. And Father, we want to give and just bless you to show you that we honor you. It says in uh, Proverbs that we honor the Lord with the first fruits and the increase. And so we want to honor you and show that we see you as our source, not our job, not anything else. You are our source. And we're taking a portion of what you've given us and we're giving it back to you. And I believe, Father, that you are pleased with this. And Father, you receive these offerings and that you bless it back to every single person who gives a hundredfold in this life. And Father, we thank you for doing that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can receive the offering. Praise God. You know, right now we're building these dorms over here and uh, I, we've got a finance meeting going on as we speak. And so I don't have the latest report, but the last that I heard we're on target to having two of these dorms finished by August. And so we'll be able to accommodate, uh, that's 156 students in these dorms. And we're able to provide the uh, dorm room and uh, utilities, internet, trash, and tuition for what one person would have to pay at Trail Ridge. So that's pretty good. It's gonna save people. It's going to save the students somewhere around six to eight hundred dollars a month, which is enough to pay their tuition. So that's really awesome. And praise God, we're believing to get that done. We've already got the foundations poured on all six of the dorms that are right over here. And uh, so we, we've already got a large portion of that. We've probably spent about 14 to 15 million dollars uh, in the last few months on these dorms. And it's a total of 50, I think it's $58 million that we need to get all six of those dorms done. And we're going to get it done, praise God. And then we're also working at the same time on a student activity center that'll be right over here. And man, the, the latest drawings, this, I just couldn't see exactly how we connected all of these buildings. And our architects came up with a way of putting a, a walkway above that goes right here by the front door over to the new building. It's just beautiful. It's awesome. And we're working on that. And uh, I was out last week and we were walking the uh, property on, over on the North Campus for putting in a hotel and conference center, a 350 uh, bed conference center and hotel. And it's going to be awesome. It's got the best view in Teller County. It's going to have a Restaurant on the top with a 180 degree glass view that looks out across all of the campus. And so anyway, good things are happening. Praise God. We are, we have begun and we're just barely getting started, but you hide and watch. It will happen. Amen. So thank you all for being a part of it and praise God. 
You're laying foundations that if the Lord tarries decades from now, people will be benefiting from what you've done right here. So thank you for being a part. God bless you.